So I already introduced you briefly beforehand. Uh, you're Austrian and you moved to the States uh, at the end of the 90s, job-related reasons, and um, ever since you've been living in the States. You attended TED in 1990. That was the second conference that TED ever made. The first one was in 1984, also in California, but it, it wasn't too big a success, especially financially, and uh, we know what we're talking about, this is not easy. Uh, so the second one, it took another six years to be up, but then 1990, this was a breakthrough. How was TED like, 1990, Florian? TED was pretty amazing. Uh, when I prepared for this talk, um, I uh, looked at the old material, and it's amazing how much, after 20 years, I do remember of this event. It was truly a breakthrough, and since 1990, TED has been held every year, and uh, as far as I understand, it always has also been a financial success. Um, 500 people gathering in Monterey, California, which is about two hours south of San Francisco. 500 people from all walks of life. Uh, you had people like uh, John Scully, the then CEO of Apple. You had uh, people like Ted, uh, Ted Nelson or John Barlow, wild uh, early uh, inventors. You had artists, you had scientists, you had politicians, people who gathered to meet, to meet people who they wouldn't meet otherwise. Can you describe in some words what the spirit was at this conference? You're saying all kinds of different people coming together, there might be quite large gaps to bridge between politicians uh, and scientists. The, uh, and um, it was interesting. It was, of course, technology, entertainment, design, and many people who attended also said, oh, E is for environment, and that was 20 years ago. And people were completely excited about the opportunity. And since then, the conference has consistently been sold out. And uh, looking back, it's one of the few conferences that successfully not only survived 20 years, but also managed to reinvent itself on an ongoing basis over those years. I'm a believer that when conferences run for more than five years, they should either be killed or reinvented because they get stale. Ted was able to reinvent itself and uh, being today as fresh as it was uh, back in 1990. I gave a talk at the TED conference 1994, I think, TED, it was TED 4th, 93 or 94, in Kobe, Japan. And that was, again, completely different. If you look at TED now, it's very easy for ideas to spread over the internet, especially with uh, riveting talks by remarkable people online, easily to stream anywhere you are in the world. How has TED, uh, the conference itself, changed ever since? Has it changed or lost any of its spirit? Well, actually, if you, um, if you think back, 1993 uh, was, the, was the first time I, c I created a website. 93 was the time when we had the first browsers. So this is when the internet, as we know it today, started. Um, and uh, I don't think it has lost. It has changed, obviously. Today you can listen to the talks online. And uh, that is uh, something that the organizers took into consideration and uh, reshaped the conference. And that's very, very important to do that. So TEDx in Vienna is definitely an amazing step forward and a great opportunity for everybody. Why do you think Vienna is a good place for it? TEDx event, to bridge the gap, we chose this theme out of loads of different reasons. Why do you think Vienna is a good place to bridge gaps? Well, Vienna uh, has always been a place that, that uh, bridges gaps. Uh, Vienna is back in the center of Europe. Vienna has traditionally bridged gaps between uh, um, all uh, cultural groups, uh, um, groups of all walks of life, uh, communities uh, from this huge empire that, uh, of course, disappeared after World War I, but uh, Vienna continues to uh, influence uh, culture and art worldwide. And I think Vienna not only has the potential, but also the, the, uh, oppo uh, has the opportunity and also the, uh, uh, the requirement, uh, the task to continue to bridge the gap. Uh, between uh, areas that uh, otherwise would not get together. 
But I've got great news for you. We're not only here, Austrian people, um, at our TEDx Vienna event, but uh, we're currently starting to build something which promises to be very exciting in the future. We've got present uh, the TEDx organizers of uh, TEDx Prague, of TEDx Budapest, or the TEDx Danubia boys, uh, TEDx Bratislava, TEDx Salzburg, TEDx Pannonia. You can really see how this idea caught on. And uh, Vienna, as you said, has always been a place to bridge gaps. We've been in the center between East and West during the Cold War. Vienna was known as a place where secret agents would meet and uh, exchange intelligence of any kind. Hardly anything else that you would hear from Vienna about except that. In the last couple of years, with the EU expansion and uh, international institutions rediscovering Vienna as an interesting place to have uh, offices, we recognized our strategic and geopolitical importance in Europe. How do you see TEDx as a uh, something to spread really quickly? Do you see that as punctual events, or do you, would you encourage it to become a network of some kind? I think, uh, especially today, it's important to become a network to build those bridges. You're just showing a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge, and while today nobody could envision uh, San Francisco without the Golden Gate, uh, when, they were, when it was built in 1929, people actually were against it. They thought it's a bad idea to bridge these two points. Uh, so not always uh, are bridges immediately recognized as something beneficial. And I think one of the responsibilities of uh, TEDx, but also of all the attendees at TEDx, is to encourage bridging. And when I, when I talk about encourage bridging, that also includes always also looking at the gaps that are being bridged. We, we run into the risk when we uh, just uh, talk about bridging that we are not aware of what are we bridging and what are the opportunities of cracks that always uh, form at uh, organic fissures where uh, things lie below that uh, can give us a lot of information about why a crack exists and um, how we can benefit from underlying layers and the things that are inside the crack. The crack that lets the light in, yeah. Yeah, I correct right, the last slide, and yes, it's very, very important. That's the, that's the organic development. What do you consider, I mean, you bridged a lot of gaps in your life, uh, only reading your bio, one is quite impressed. What do you believe, what does it take to bridge a, back, a gap? What's important in your eyes? Um, to bridge a gap, the first thing is you have to understand the gap. Why is a the gap there? Um, what, how can a gap uh, benefit? Just understanding it. And... Uh, then uh, bridge the gaps where there's a real benefit for people not only to uh, cross over, but also to uh, um, benefit from the organic understanding. I was thinking about putting a um, slide in from, uh, from the last uh, little uh, crossing of the Donau Canal in the, in the third district, uh, not very far where, where, from where you hold the conference. There used to be a guy with a little boat that took people from one side to the other. And that is being replaced now by a modern bridge. And if you read up on that on the internet, you will find just the fact that people had to take the time to cross the Donau Canal on this little boat completely changed the way they saw their day, if nothing else. It's a very, very uh, funny little detail about uh, Dianensia. Mm -hmm. To understand what what does it mean to take the time to cross the bridge, uh, cross the gap? I'm sorry. Okay. Or in this case, don't. Hide. Florian, thank you very much. I think it's. Thank worth you for having me. It's good luck with the conference. I, and, I believe uh, it's worth noticing that it wasn't us who approached you, but kind of you who approached us, saying you're be, you're doing a TEDx Vienna. That's amazing. Let me be a part of it from six thousand kilometers and away. Absolutely. And if there's anything else, if there's anything else I can contribute. And that goes to you and goes to all the attendees. Please feel free uh, to contact me. I think I provided a slide with my email address. Should be the next one, or the last one. Um, feel free to... Uh, uh, and all the slides are on my blog, so feel free to check them out. Thank you so much for having me. Good luck with the event. Thank you, Florian.